You know, with the self-titled album uh, and then West Side Connection with Bow Down and then based on a true story, that's like a real impressive run right there, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was always like really impressed with what with, with Mac had put together and that was three years. And then when we get to 98, we get the All From The Eye, you guys debut, their self-titled debut album. <clears throat> so what was the reason that you guys, because I noticed you did it only with uh, Get Your Bang On, but why did you end up putting that on the album and not some of the other songs that had been out yet? Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, like, well, why we put the check, uh, some other songs and put on the record also? Yeah. Well, let's start with this. Why did, uh, why did you decide to get your bang on in particular? You definitely wanted and ended up putting it on the album. You remember why? Man, because actually, you know what? I wanted to put it out as a single. I, I just, that the, the song had enough, um, you know, out here, it was, you know, people, you know, they were bumping it. So I was like, I wanted, I wanted to, you know, we, you know, we had already had a clean version to it and everything. So I wanted to push it. And then the other thing was, since um, it had so much success and that, that, that gang related record had did so good, it was, you know, that's, that's another thing about the business. Let's, it's, it's going to give us some more attention. We take this record on here. If people already heard this song, that, that, that kind of gives us a little leverage right there of just having this, this another hot song we already had, had it out. You know, let's put it on the record. And it, we weren't the first person, to, people to do that, you know. There had already been other songs, you know, hot songs. People had put it on a compilation or something like that. And they threw it on their own album. So it was, I guess you would say it was more just like a, um, it was it was just an extra feature. Gotcha. A, 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 the bonus song. Okay. No, it's just because that one, you know, say what got the best hand it wasn't on the album. I was just curious yeah. as to why that one. But it's a great song, so it makes sense. So uh, when you get to uh, the All From The Eye album, the first the self-titled debut album, and it's in 98, what, at this point, how have you guys, you and Bink kind of evolved, uh, and what? How was your working relationship? How did you guys work so well when you were making that album? Well, we had been at it so long that we just knew how to, you know, we knew how to tag team off of each other. You know, what I'm saying, um, I would tell Bink, you know, what I was feeling. You know, what I'm saying what kind of beats I wanted. You know, um, and you know, he go in the pot and start seasoning it up. You know, and um, I just know that the in the camp, I wanted to um, just wherever, wherever the connect had, I just wanted to pick up wherever they left off. You know, I just wanted to pick up what, what, what they were doing. And because uh, they were having so much success, man, I just, you know, I had, you know, I had already been a big Cube fan, you know. So I just wanted to follow in those footsteps. And even the success that Mac was having, I just wanted to follow in those footsteps, man. Because I just felt like it, they're leading the way, so why not follow, you know, and put my own spin on it, also. Right. But we we had a good time making that record, though. Yeah. Well, it's it's definitely a high quality underground gem. And the yeah. thing, the thing that I always thought was interesting and in thinking back to it was how you guys opened it with the prayer. So. Of course, DMX had prayers and got big on that later, but for you, uh, or around the same time, but a little bit later. But yeah, yeah. why Why did you guys feel that that was the right way to start the album? Um, my, my homie, had, 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 um, he read the prayer for me one day, and I was like, man, this is dope. And, uh, you know, just, you know, Big and myself, we, you know, we, 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 we I was, we're, we're faithful people, you know, and just to have that, you know, we, you know, we don't do anything with our God involved, you know, no matter, you know, saying what it is, the, the, the content, you know, saying, you know, um, people might think that's strange, but, you know, we don't do anything without, you know, saying, having a blessing to it. And, um, 
I just wanted to do something um, just to, uh, you know, just, I guess to me, you know, to be, uh, I don't, I, it's hard to explain, man. I don't know the words to put with it, but I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to have something just, just from the heart. You know, just just to sort of be hard for just some, I guess, some soul in it. I I, I, would, I would use that sense. Okay. Yeah, I, I just remember at that point, and I want to get to this right now too. But skits, interludes, intros were all very valuable on albums, or at least yeah, to me, made albums more interesting and more cinematic. And it started off with a prayer was definitely unusual step, especially on a gangster rap album. So I was just. Yeah, that always intrigued me. But then with uh, County Jail, of course, being the biggest single on there, I would say, and the biggest song, yeah, yeah. That, that one also leads in with the insert right before it. So on the cinematic side, the, dr the dramatic side, the creative side, what made that a song you wanted to have a an insert or an intro to? Well, you know, it was the single, you know what I'm saying? We want to have something special for the single. You know what I'm saying, um, and uh, you know, uh, you know, like you said, it was probably the, the biggest song from the record. So you try, you, you know, we had to get that some some extra little, uh, some extra little special uh, uh, drip to it, you know. And I, I you know, and, and then we had all those, uh, and that was all Binks' idea at the time too, also. But um, you know, coming up with the skit and uh, he just kept saying, "Man, we got to have something in the same wood." So that that's that's what he ended up coming up with, but it was um, it, it, it you know, I think the, the skit was pretty tight. And then he, uh, Bink, of course, produced the majority of the album, but a couple of them, that one and like Guess Who, are produced by All from the Eye, credit wise. Yeah, yeah. What, what was the difference of what you or how that worked to where it was All from the Eye versus Bink? Well, no, no. Well, it's really all in the hole. When it's just off in the eye, that's just me putting my own little sprinkles on it, you know. But, you know, me, most of the format with, with the music is being, you know. Like, when it came to County Jail, I just said, hey, man, I want to sample this. And, he, he, you know, he pulled it up and, and you know, you just give your, um, you know, you just give your critique on it, you know. Well, you know, that, you know, don't don't sample it that long or, you know, say, add this, you know what I'm saying, in it, you know. So, but for the most part, a lot of it is bank. Well, I think it's important though, because a lot of people, rap, I think is the one genre of music where the producer and what the producer does is so not clear. Cause in yeah. every other form of music, the producer doesn't necessarily, doesn't have to, and usually does not make the music. Whereas in rap, the assumption is the producer makes the music, but the producer can also do what you're saying, which is tell people what to do or kind of orchestrate. That's another, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's what actually producing is in every other form of music, basically, other than rap, <clears throat> pretty yeah, much. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I just thought it was interesting and important to, uh, you know, explain that. And then with County Jail lyrically, the thing about it, and I remember hearing, and every time I hear the song or think about the song, it's sad in the sense that all that stuff is still going on today, you know? Yeah, yeah. And and for you, and unfortunately, it had been going on long before you wrote the song. So <laughs> it's uh, unfortunately timeless, but when you were writing it, did you understand the effect and the politics of the gangs you were talking about and all the stuff you were talking about in that song that it was going to be so timeless and unfortunately relevant for so long? No, I didn't. And I actually just, I did the song because I wanted to do something well, from my own experience. And I wanted to do something that I knew everyone could relate to, you know, especially out here in LA, you know, if you haven't been to the county jail yourself personally, you've had someone with some sort of involvement in it, you know, whether you had to go down there and visit someone, you had to help bail someone out, you know. You had, in your family's timeline, you had some experience with the county jail. And I knew it was something that everyone that could relate to. And I just wanted to touch on something I kind of felt like 
hadn't really been, you know, touched on as um, you know, in detail. I would say, you know, what I'm saying. So I just want to do something that everybody can relate to. Yeah. And when you said 9500, were you talking about the module? No. Well, see, the module will be um, the module was um. The four thousand floor. So ninety five hundred is like uh, it was. It, well, it's probably all. It's, I think it's all different now. Yeah, they, yeah. I think they broke the modules and all that up. But ninety five hundred was really like it's, it's it's general population. So it's one of the first when you first would come in, you would go to the nine thousand floor. So you had ninety five hundred, ninety four hundred, ninety two hundred. You know what I'm saying? But the first one you, you, you know called a new fish, you would enter into ninety five hundred. So that's your first. Before you can get to the module, you're going to go to 9,500. And then, you know, a lot of times, bloods, you know what I'm saying, you would have to separate yourself, you know, go tell the deputy, hey, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to beat off, you know what I'm saying. And they would send you, so you can go to the 4,000 floor, which were the modules were, gang modules. So, you know, 4,300 was the, all the bloods, and 4,800 was the crips. And then in between those, you know, it be it might be a little mixture of anything. I mean, I, I got, let me tell you something, I got sent one time, right? So when you get to the hall, you know, going to the left, you know, you know that's forty three hundred. You know that's where the, you know, the blood is. If you go to the right, where forty eight is, you know that's the, so. I'm like the only blood in the little line. So they send me to the, they send me to the right, and I'm thinking I'm going to forty eight. I stepped out of line. I, hey, I'm not going in there. But they it was, it was going to the like forty six hundred, forty seven hundred, something like that. And they were like, nah, it's it's, it's 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 a little different here today. They was they were using it as like a transfer unit. You like it, it was changing every day. Like one day we be a lot of bloods, the next day we were a lot of crips. So it was just guys were getting sent out different places. But I was like, I was like, hey man, I ain't going in there by myself. Right. That's, that's how crazy. Hey, the module was something else, man. That that was, that's a different type of life. No, I know because uh, I wrote a movie for Snoop, and hopefully we're still gonna do it one day. Called forty eight hundred. So me and Snoop, me and Snoop did that. So I knew, I knew the the fourth level, and I knew all that, but I didn't know what the ninety five was. That's why I was I was always curious about that. So yeah, ninety five. That was just a nine thousand floor. It's just general population. It really was. Okay, and then uh, it's just interesting too. All the different stories you weave into the one story of like the the baby mama fighting with the girlfriend and the essays being so strong in there. So yeah. on the writing side of things, um, how do you, like what made that song so powerful to where you were able to capture all these huge, big things going on in one song? Just telling the story, I man, you just want to give it like, a, um, I just wanted to give you the, the, the lineup on how it was gonna go. You know what I'm saying? You know, I use, you, you know you, 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 when you got there, you were 9,500, you know, your whole process was going through the county jail, you know what I mean? And uh, all those things played in the factor, you know what I'm saying? When you go, if you when you go to Los Angeles County Jail, the Hispanics are going to be the most pop. They're going to be, they're going to hold all population in there. Yeah, I don't care what floor you, whatever, you, they're going to hold, they're going to be majority. And that's just a, a true fact, you know? So I want to put that in. Uh, you just want to go in details of, of, of what goes on. The baby mama and the girlfriend. I know a lot of those cases that was happening, you know what I'm saying? So that happens. So um, and then give people something. Like when I say the, you can relate to the song, so you want to paint that picture of what goes on through that whole process. And I think that's what would would capture and it, it, it would capture a lot of people with the song. And it was all like um, to be honest with you, man, it was you know, I, I stole the format from Q, because it to be honest. County jail is really just how to survive in South Central. You know. It's just in jail instead of on the streets? Yeah, and I I use the same sample and everything. It's really, you know, I just told I just took the format from Cube and, and, and just 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 um put my own twist on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's a great song. And uh 
Very powerful. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a fifty thousand dollar car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It would be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Your MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.